Hey folks, Joseph Isabora here. I decided to do another movie review on Halloween. And what do you know? <laughs> it's a Halloween anthology horror comedy. Trick or Treat. Yes. Trick or Treat with the R in the middle. <laughs> Instead of an or. <laughs> Just apostrophe R. It's produced by Brian Singer, the same man who gave us the usual suspects, along with Ab Poopal, the X Men movies, Superman Returns, yeah, <laughs> among others. Premiered on October 6, 2009, as available as a direct to video release by Warner Premiere, yeah, Warner Brothers uh, label for direct-to-video movies and TV specials. It was originally going to be released in theaters in 2007 because this was made that year and unfortunately it had to be pushed back. They didn't give it an official release but it winds up being released in several film festivals before all the fans finally get a chance to own it on home video. And that's how it happened. It has all the features on both DVD and Blu-ray. But it now has a new release by Shout Factory's uh, label, Screen Factory, as a collector's edition that not only ported all the features, but it has a new 2K remaster, which I saw the screenshots. It's, they just basically use a red-orange tint uh, into the prints and they try to make it look almost as you know old school 35 millimeter but it's also digital and they also added a new feature to join in so for those uh, who own the previous release at least they'll probably get a chance to see it but there is a problem it turns out that it now became a problematic for, for those who have picked up the release. They actually had some scratches on the inner rein of the disc. So now they're having a hard time trying to find a replacement for the disc so that way it'll be become playable. So that way it'll become playable. Because a, a lot of people are having trouble playing the disc especially when they're trying to get into the movie or, or even access all the features. So, luck me had it. They are fixing the problem. So now, for those uh, who have this problem, at least they'll be able to see it for themselves and not have to worry about it anymore. But, yeah, it's, it's becoming a difficult year for Screen Factory as opposed to other um, home video companies to deal with this. It's because of the plant that they now chose since they just shut down a disc manufacturing plant in the US so now they're just going directly to Mexico so I know this is going to be a problem but certainly I hope they fix everything because this is not exactly what we wanted so. but either way um, but hey, people still have their previous releases, and that's good enough for it. So if you have your own release, you get to see it for yourself and not have to worry about this problem. But anyway, I mean, this movie deserves better than that. <laughs> anyway, I saw the movie a long time ago. I really enjoyed it. I love the idea that they decided to use uh, a non-linear narrative. So this is quite different from all these other anthologies that we see like Creep Show, Tales from the Hood, Tales from the Dark Side of the Movie, Twilight Zone the Movie, and many others to follow. And even for recent years, considering that this is already past 10 years, this is actually one of the better anthologies during this particular period. And it really works, especially since this is set during Halloween. See, we don't see anything like this before. And this is a good choice that they chose. And this is a good choice. And what's even amazing is that they even got a character named Sam 
who's actually a demonic uh, pumpkin head child who just loves to have some candy. And this is why he has a uh, <laughs> he has like a bird lap that's being uh, wrapped all over his head. He yeah, ties him up and then he just grabs a, a lollipop of a pumpkin. He, he actually crunches it and, and ready to attack all the victims. But it's all being set place of story after story. It's actually based on uh, Michael DeHarity's uh, short, it's called Season's Greetings, from 1996, which is also included as a special feature. So this is a so this alone had became the anthology uh, with the help of Brian Singer, because he actually worked with Michael Dare, because he actually worked with Michael the Harity uh, ever since uh, you know the X Men movies and Superman Returns uh, come to mind, and now he has uh, another film that he's working on the upcoming uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters and I know he already worked on the movie uh, Krampus which came out in 2015 so this is like a perfect follow-up to it only it's set in Christmas while Trick or Treat is set in Halloween but it's not an apology for uh, Krampus it's a whole different movie uh, so I like to see what the, the sequel will turn out to be once it's made. Anyway, and I can't wait to check out the upcoming Godzilla to see how he does it. Well, anyway, let, let's get to the review. It stars Dylan Baker, who's been best known for playing Dr. Chuck Connors in the Sam Raimi uh, sequels of Spider Man. Yeah, Spider Man 2 and 3. He's been in several other movies too. Anna Paquin you know, won an Oscar for her role in the movie The Piano before she went on to do Fly Away Home and then afterwards she played Rogue in the X-Men movies. And speaking of X-Men, Brian Cox is in this too. Yes, and he's been best known for, for playing the Hannibal Lecter, the original Hannibal Lecter in Manhunter. And he's been in several other films too. And yes, he plays Stryker, you know, the villain in the movie. Gerald uh, Puzz, Quinn Lord, Lauren Lee Smith, Rochelle Itez, Britt McKillop, Jean Luc Bilodeau, Sam Todd, Alberto Gissi, Isabel Deluzzi. Monica Delane, Leslie Bibb, Tama Pennequet, Brett Kelly, yes, from Bad Santa, the fat kid. Yeah, he was also in the movie Unaccompanied Minors. Yeah. Connor Levins, uh, James Wilson, Patrick Gilmore, C. Ernst Hart. Akina Shanu and Christine Willis. And it's written and directed by Michael DeHarity. The movie begins taking place in a fictional town called Warren Valley, Ohio, you know, during Halloween night, which is being told in nonlinear narrative, you know, with all the characters crossing paths through each other. But the center of the story focuses on a trick-or-treater named Sam. Yeah, with a burlap sack, and he wears pajamas. But underneath him at all, it's a pumpkin head creature. And he loves uh, to bring in a pumpkin head uh, lollipop and crunches it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in the beginning, we meet uh, Emma and her husband, Henry, who return home from a disastrous night uh, for Halloween. But Emma tears down the seasonal decorations before being murdered by Sam that's ducked underneath the, the sheets. 
Henry was about to watch a porno in bed. So, so yes, um, he discovered that she's now becoming a mutated corpse on display. And this is where we cut to the scene with Charlie, who's uh, played by Brett Kelly, who's an obese bando who goes around smashing jack-o'-lanterns all around in the neighborhood, but he wants to be counting his school principal, Stephen Wilkins, who's played by Dylan Baker. So he lectures Charlie on how the rules and traditions of Halloween must be obeyed. And this is where and he gave uh, Charlie a chocolate bar which causes him to vomit all the way around until he passes out. Yeah. And all that blood started to splatter all the way through, uh, yeah, with chocolate mixed in underneath uh, Wilkins' uh, white shirt. Yeah, so he decided to actually bury him all the way down him in a graveyard in his entire house yeah well his son was just being incredibly annoying and I just couldn't believe he said this because he was also telling him to go watch Charlie Brown as in it's a great pumpkin Charlie Brown and he says Charlie Brown's an asshole I was like thinking to myself why can't Wilkins just kill that kid? I mean, that kid was just so fucking irritating. And the fact that he insulted one of my favorite characters, he deserved to have his head uh, on a platter. Besides Charlie. <laughs> but, of course, it did trick the audience into thinking that this was going to happen. He was going to grab the knife, he was going to stab him, but nope, it turns out that, yes, <laughs> yes, it was, of course, as I mentioned, Charlie on the platter. Anyway, the kid's name is Billy. Boy, what an ass. Uh, meanwhile, we had a group of trick-or-treaters uh, named Macy, Sarah, Chip, and Schrader. They actually met uh, Wanda, who turns out to be an idiot savant. So they wound up traveling all the way down to a local quarry where they recalled an urban legend involving the, the kids in a school bus that's being trapped by a deranged uh, bus driver, which also led to the story, named Krieg, who was played by Gerald Paz, but it would eventually be, become Brian Cox. Yes, because he was the next door neighbor for Wilkins. Uh, anyway, uh, it led to a, a Halloween school bus massacre where, uh, where one kid who was dressed up as a vampire decided he wanted to leave home. So he, he escaped and decided to dri drive off until suddenly the bus drive up with the rest of the kids and Creed all the way down into a giant hole into the river and they all drowned the only one who survived was Creed so people so they said they never heard from him again well until we find out that he's the next door neighbor <laughs> yeah but the kids suddenly pulled a prank on um, on Rhonda like thinking that uh, all these uh, kids that came from the the river, so they're actually alive as zombies, or what seems to be, is going to attack them. But it turns out that this was just part of a prank. So she decided, well, since she already uh, hit her head on the back when she fell, she decided, well. Since it's just going to be another prank, she decided to leave all of her own while the rest of the kids got attacked by these kids. Then the next, we, we, we spotted Lori, because you know, she was with um, her sister Danielle, along with their friends Marie and Janet. Yeah. Lori's actually a self-conscious uh, 
young woman. Yeah, they were all dressed up in costumes, you know, like like Snow White, uh, Cinderella, uh, Little Bo Peep, and Little Red Riding Hood, so all the fairy tales. So anyway, they're about to pick up some dates, you know, they're about to spend their entire night uh, on Halloween uh, somewhere in the park, only to discover that there's a, a hooded sexual predator, yeah, we're going for that here, <laughs> who's actually dressed up as a vampire, wants up attacking all the victims, even attacked the one girl, but this time he attacks uh, Lori, so bit her neck, and this is where we didn't see it coming, a twist, where all, all of Lori's friends, including her herself, are werewolves. So they wound up attacking the hooded sexual predator, who actually turned out to be Wilkins. Also attack all the rest of the, the, the guys, too. And that's when we finally uh, got to see Sam, because I know he's been witnessing all the events that's happening, going after uh, Mr. Krieg. Just when he was about to uh, scare off all the kids you know, during Halloween by actually uh, the, having his own dog disguise himself and you know, wearing a Halloween costume just to, so that he can get all the candy he wants. Yeah, he's basically a mean old neighbor next door. But yes, it also takes place uh, earlier. But then Sam wants up uh, going inside Mr. Creek's house and started torturing him. This is where Sam suddenly went, he went all the way up into his room. And this is where you see all these... Uh, you see that particular message that's being all written throughout the entire uh, room that says, trick or treat, smell my feet, give yourself something good to eat. Yeah, that particular poem. And this is where he was ready to attack Mr. Creed. Yeah, he actually uses uh, a small blade that's hidden inside a candy bar and just cut off his leg the back of his uh, leg and then and suddenly he fell all the way down into the stairs that's filled with candy Halloween candy around and and it already uh, messed up his hands all and filled with blood so he was about to escape but then he had to bring in the shotgun because he had a shotgun all this time to shoot him so he did shot uh, Sam down until and he was ready to call the police, but then Sam's uh, hand that got shot off uh, pulls the cord and was ready to put himself together again, and and once again ready to attack him until well he found the chocolate bar when he took out the the jack o' lantern the lollipop gave it a crunch and then sticks it into the chocolate bar because he was all already ready to stab him with but he just stabbed the chocolate bar and just eats it and then he left well he's all injured up so yes um, Mr. Creed uh, already injured and already wrapped himself up decided to give all the Halloween candy to all the kids until we led to the end where, because it all sets up the story, where you see all the characters in, in connect at the end. And then we, yes, of course we see Sam. And then afterwards, uh, yeah, just when Sam was just getting ready to go after them, as we saw in the beginning, uh, all the kids uh, that came uh, <laughs> from the quarry, they came up and going after uh, Mr. Creed. Just when he was ready to give them some candy. And there you go. <laughs> this really sets up the story straight. It's the perfect Halloween anthology 
that you'll never forget. And I'm glad to see that they made this after all these years. They could have done this a long time ago, uh, even before 2007, but at least they got it exactly in the right pacing at the right time. You got a great cast right there with Dylan Baker, is very creepy as uh, Principal Stephen Wilkins. Anna Paquin has never been this hot <laughs> as Lori. In fact, I think all the girls in, <laughs> in fact, all of Lori's friends are pretty hot. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I mean, think of it this way. This is the same little girl who won an Oscar for the piano, and she was very sweet. And she was also the one who winds up uh, flying with all the geese around up in the air in Fly Away Home. And of course she played Rogue <laughs> in the X-Men movies. So, hey, she went on to do the TV series True Blood, so makes you wonder <laughs> that, yeah, she was very hot. Uh, but Brian Cox was very good too, playing the mean old uh, neighbor next door, Mr. Creed, who's, which led to that connection that he was the bus driver, who was responsible for trapping all the kids uh, at the school bus, ready for to become another massacre. So, deep down of it, he was very evil. But at times you do kind of feel sorry for him, you know. Having to get himself all injured and get stabbed and attack by Sam. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but hey, it, it was cool to see uh, such a supporting cast and great story that's all written by uh, Michael DeHarity. So he knows exactly what he was doing. And perfect direction right there. Um, the music, of course, was done by. Douglas Pipes definitely creates an eerie score in between, but also has a mix of other music uh, that they play uh, in the background yeah, during the party. But it's definitely the perfect movie to watch every Halloween night, or even in, during October, too. So, so th this is perfect. And Hopefully a sequel will be available someday, and if that happens, you know, this is exactly why, you know, this is, had became a cult following over the years, and the fact that it had a lot of attention. They even had uh, a theme park attraction that's based on this for, for Sam, the pumpkin head uh, child, by wearing the bird lab sack over his head. And he wears those pajamas uh, walking around. Becoming more iconic now. <laughs> but it's definitely original. It definitely works. And it's definitely one of the better anthologies of recent years. Well, since it's made in 2007. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but check it out. It's fun. And definitely pick it up on Blu ray and DVD, especially the collector's edition from Screen Factory. Yeah, as long as it doesn't have any problems, then we're okay. But it, it's fun. I love it. So anyway, I give Trick or Treat a solid five stars. And great way to watch this movie, especially with Halloween candy. <laughs> yeah, it's just as long as you don't eat the, the giant chocolate bar that causes you to vomit all that chocolate filled with blood around. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.